So we left the family in this little boat in the middle of a storm at night. Let's see what happens next. As the sun rises, we see land for the first time in days. The boat rocks silently to shore. Our mother tells us we are very lucky to still be together. Is this the place where we'll be safe? We ask. It is close, she says with a tired smile. We travel for more days and more nights, crossing many borders. From the train, I look up to the birds that seem to be following us. They are migrating, just like us, and their journey is very long too, but they don't have to cross any borders. I hope one day, like these birds, we will find a new home, a home where we can be safe and begin our story again. So I really hope you enjoyed the journey. This is the author's note at the back. She says, the journey is actually a story about many journeys and it began with the story of two girls I met in a refugee centre in Italy. After meeting them, I realised that behind their journey lay something very powerful. So I began collecting more stories of migration and interviewing many people from many different countries. A few months later, in September 2014, when I started studying a Master of Arts in Illustration at the Academy of Lucerne, I knew I wanted to create a book about these true stories. Almost every day on the news we hear the terms migrants and refugees, but we rarely ever speak to or hear the personal journeys that they have had to take. This book is a collage of all those personal stories and the incredible strength of the people within them. Did you notice the birds on each page of the journey? Perhaps you did spot them as we went through. I think it's really interesting to think about the way birds travel over so many different countries, but like it says in the book, they don't have to cross any borders. So we'd like you to have a go at performing a poem today as your suggested English task. And just in case you were wondering how this middle poem works, I thought I might read it out for you. I haven't really um, practiced this in terms of putting more expression and things into it or thinking about anything else I might want to do when I'm performing it. I'm just going to read it for you so that you understand how it works, but you might like to spend a bit more time practicing it if you choose this one. So first of all, you need to read it forwards and you pause at the punctuation. The Refugees, authored by Jason Fotso. Turn away the refugees. We will not open up our homes and hearts for children. Close our doors on the weak. Only fear behind our love can put strength in our hands. We cannot let them bleed into our nation. They share the blood of our enemy. Our own are endangered by the refugees. We have forgotten the words that the Statue of Liberty shines in this darkest hour. Terror stands stronger than our people of power. This fear conquers the home of the brave. Okay, so that's one message of the poem, basically saying um, we're too frightened to let refugees in. Um, it's written by somebody in the US, so we're too frightened to let the refugees in and we don't want them here. But if you read it backwards, now I don't mean backwards by taking each word backwards, but by starting at the bottom line and reading upwards and pausing this time where the stanzas are instead of where the punctuation is. So let's see how we get a different message. The home of the brave conquers fear. This power of our people stands stronger than terror. In this darkest hour, the Statue of Liberty shines the words that we have forgotten. The refugees are endangered by our own enemy. They share the blood of our nation. We cannot let them bleed into our hands. Strength in our love can put our fear behind. Only the weak close our doors on children. For our homes and hearts open up. We will not turn away the refugees. Isn't it clever? I think that's such a clever poem, the way you get those two messages, depending on which way around you read it. Exactly the same language, just read in a different way. So, P, 
pick one of those or um, choose one of your own that you could find um, or you could write one if you would prefer. It's up to you. For our suggested afternoon task for the PSHE task, have a little read through of this document which um, lists out the 30 articles in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, and just have a think about which one you think is the most important or which one you think connects most to the story we've just read or is uh, means the most to you for some reason. And um, then thinking about the birds that were in the story, the journey, we'd love you to have a go at making an origami bird, which you can decorate or you can make out of coloured paper or whatever you'd like to do to make it look really beautiful. Um, and then somewhere on the bird, you could write um, your most important human right. So the one that you think is really, really important. Or again, if you would like to put it into your own words, you could put it into your own words as well. Um, if you have a look on um, the internet, you should be able to find tutorials for um, origami birds and um, I'll attach a few links as well so you can have a look.